Remember this clip from the old Brady Bunch show? It's when Jan is overtaken by jealousy of her older sister, Marcia. Take a look. All I hear all day long at school is how great Marcia is at this or how wonderful Marcia did that. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. Okay, now let's fast forward 46 years. Instead of Marcia, 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 all we're hearing these days is Russia, Russia, Russia. And it's hurting our nation and our relations and image on the global lane. In 1966, Norman Jewison directed the movie comedy, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming. Alan Arkin played the Russian lieutenant, Uri Rasanov, but you can call him by his nickname, You. The film's about a Soviet submarine that runs aground off the New England coast. Now take a look at the panic that sets in from the townspeople when the Russians come ashore looking for help. The Russians have landed. This whole dang island's under attack by Russians. The Russians have captured the airport. Yeah. Just don't panic. We've got to have ourselves a leader. It's all over. It's, it's all over. We haven't got a chance. Not a chance. It's a bit like the liberal media and the constant drumbeat of Trump administration Russia collusion, isn't it? Folks, let's all just calm down a little bit. So Donald Trump Jr. met with a Russian lawyer to possibly get some dirt on Hillary Clinton. Oh my, that's never been done by anyone in politics before now, has it? Well, maybe you should ask Hillary about meetings like that. Maybe you should also ask her about her president husband, Bill, who in 1994 sent Michael Caputo to Russia to try to get Boris Yeltsin reelected. Or ask her about President Obama and the State Department using U.S. taxpayer money, that's right, your dollars, to undermine Bibi Netanyahu's re-election effort in Israel. Well, on numerous occasions, the United States government has worked overseas to get favorable candidates elected. The Russians and others do the same thing. Now, the big question is, did the Russian tampering actually change votes? After more than eight months, there's no evidence that any votes were changed by Russian hacking into voting machines. Now, I'll tell you, what may have altered the election outcome votes cast by non-citizens and dead people. Yes, dead people. But back to Russian collusion. The Russian lawyer, Natalia Veselinitskaya, uh, didn't deliver any information, but we know she may have had ties to Fusion GPS. Now, that's the organization behind the fake Trump-Russia dossier, which reportedly received funds from some pro-Hillary Democrats. We also know that members of the Clinton campaign had similar meetings with Ukrainian officials, who reportedly actually gave them information on Donald Trump associates. So folks, every political campaign tries to dish dirt on the, your, their opponents. It's happened for years, it'll continue, and that's part of the American political game. Now, no laws are actually broken if the information is obtained legally. But the bigger issue here is the leaking of classified information and illegal wiretaps. Now that's a story worth following. And I'm assuming Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller is focused on this. If not, he should be. There were 125 leaks in Trump's first 126 days in office. Leaking government documents and information is illegal. It's a felony. Now the leakers should be investigated, including former FBI Director James Comey, who did leak classified information to his Columbia University professor friend, who then leaked it to the New York Times. So if Christopher Wray is confirmed as FBI director, he should launch an investigation of Comey, the DNC, and its alleged ties to Fusion G GPS and the Clinton campaign. He should also investigate those meetings with the Ukrainians. But the Russians, the Russians, the Russians, it's all about the Russians and Trump. And while the liberal media obsesses over Russia, let's not forget about kids like these who still suffer in Syria or in refugee camps. Let's not forget about our veterans. Many still cannot get the care they need, and at least 20 per day commit suicide in America. Let's not be so preoccupied with something that happened nine months ago that we forget to see what's happening right in front of us. Now, there are matters that are important to us as a nation, as a people, like health care, taxes, and immigration. Elections and political invest investigations will come and go, but how we treat one another will last forever. Let's not forget to pray for one another and pray for our country. Second Chronicles 2.14 uh, tells us, If we humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, then God will hear from heaven and he will forgive our sins and will heal our land. Boy, we need a lot of healing. That's it from the Global Lane this week. Until next time, I'm Gary Lane. Be blessed.